Hi friends, it's Holly Jones from Mrs. Jones Stitches. Welcome to floss tube number 26. Today is Sunday, January the 28th, 2024. And I appreciate you joining me today. Um, it's been a while since I filmed a floss tube. Um, almost two months, I think. Um, I actually had filmed a floss tube um, kind of in that you know, time between like Christmas and New Year's. And um, I, um, I have a an easel right here that I um like a magnetic board that I put my charts on when I stitch and um, I realized when I was editing the video that you could completely see the chart so I elected to not upload the video um, and just kind of scrapped it so I didn't want to refilm it and everything like that it was it was gonna be a kind of a pain so um, anyway so I made sure that I don't have any patterns visible um, this time so I hope everybody had a great holiday season, and I hope your 2024 is off to a great start. Um, I have a lot of stuff to share with you uh, this time, so we'll kind of um, we'll kind of get started. So on my Instagram, which is at Mrs. Jones Stitches, I decided recently um, that I wanted to host a Smalls Exchange. Now I did a Smalls Exchange last year with um, Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher, Jody, um, she's Simply Stitching Ocala, uh, Felicia Floss and Blocks, Hannah the Stitch Fairy, Alicia the Fanciful Flamingo. Yes, it was it was um, it was the six of us. And so what we did was we drew names and then um, stitched for like our secret person. Um, so anyway, that was a lot of fun. Um, Jody drew my name and she stitched me like the sweetest um, primrose piece. I stitched um, for Jessica and I did like a lemon, um, a lemon theme for hers. Um, but anyway, um, I, I wanted to do another one. So I did a Blackbird Design Smalls Exchange and the only um, criteria was that your um, piece must be small. And I left that up to interpretation. Um, it could be small like a small like pin cushion or it could be you know a small framed piece um, but it just had to have a bird in it anywhere the bird didn't have to be the center you know focus of the chart but it just needed to have a bird somewhere so let me show you um, well before that so I I got I got an overwhelming response with that um, I honestly thought like I might have like 20 25 people want to do it if that um, so I created the sign up and I just capped it at 40 people just because I was like, well, like if it fills up, it fills up. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And not only did it fill up <clears throat> very quickly, I probably had 10 to 15 people message me afterwards saying that they really wish they could participate. So, um, the feedback just kind of blew me away on that. So, um, I will be doing another, um, smalls exchange, um, probably in the next like month or two. Um, the deadline for this one, the package has to be sent by March 1st. So maybe towards the middle of February, I'll um, get another one organized. Um, and that way we can have another one for the spring. I haven't decided if I'm going to stick with Blackbird um, and just do a different theme or if we can do maybe different designers um, or, you know, a different theme. And it could be any designer. I haven't really, um, I haven't really thought about that part yet, but I do have a whole bunch of different like theme ideas. So I'm really excited to do that. I'd like to host several of them in 2024. And I really think it's a great way to um, network in the cross stitching community. And it's just a fun activity because everybody loves getting happy mail. So um, with that being said, let me show you the piece I'm working on. And one of the things I did with this swap too is the person that I'm stitching for is not the same person that's stitching for me. So one thing I like about doing it that way is that um, since nobody knows who who they're stitching for, and I'm sorry, who's stitching for them, um, you can post your progress on your Instagram and social media channels, and you know that it'll still be a surprise for the recipient. So I really like that. So my piece is from the book the bells on Christmas Day and I'm stitching this right here this is a needle book um, I'm not going to finish it as a needle book but that's what it looks like right there there's another picture of it it's called wild and sweet and 
This is what my progress looks like right now. And I did do a color and cotton color conversion. Here's kind of my colors I've chosen. So let's get that brown in there too. Actually this brown is um, a general art brown. So I've used General Arts Harvest Basket, which I really like this because it's kind of maybe like a little bit of a yellowy brown. Color and Cotton Old Lace. Winterberry. Taffy. Ghoul. Tadpole. Oh, I'm sorry, this one's a Weeks too. Uh, moss, I needed a really variegated uh, darker green. Color and Cotton Tambourine and color and cotton serenade and again i did um do a color conversion so <clears throat> these colors um are going to be right here and this fabric is um sandcastle by color and cotton and it's looking really pretty right now so i'm really excited for that i'm excited for my recipient to receive her gift um, and then I also set a couple um, little kind of extras in the exchange. I asked that people provide me their um, their year of birth because a lot of times blackbirds um, allow you to personalize a little bit. Um, I asked my recipients um, or anybody participating, I guess, to provide their initials, their year of birth, um, their favorite color, and then a little like favorite treat. Um, it's not required that you send anything extra, but. Um, you know, I always like to add a little something, something special for um, the people I stitch for. So um, I'm really excited about that. I've seen quite a few people tag it on um, Instagram. <laughs> and speaking of that, um, the hashtag. So I just did hashtag Blackbird Smalls Exchange. Um, and I, we had a good chuckle because um, depending on how you read the hashtag, it looks like it says Blackbird Small sex change um so we kind of had a good giggle about that but um we're still using the hashtag so it's fine but it's blackbird smalls exchange um not not the other one <laughs> so um okay so that is the blackbird exchange um let's talk about blessing samplers so i have seen a lot of people start stitching blessing samplers after the beginning of the year and i um, really hopped on the bandwagon and I started late but I had seen um, Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher stitch a blessing sampler she did the needle worker sampler by Brenda Gervais which is lovely I stitched that for um, mania this past May and it was so fun to stitch and if you've not seen Jessica's you need to hop over to her Instagram or her floss tube because hers is just lovely um, so I wanted to do a blessing sampler I took this from the Blackbird Designs book, Honeysuckle Manor, and I'm stitching Margaret Harris 1877, which is this piece right here. And here's a better picture of it, a little bigger one. It is so pretty. So I stitched mine, and here it is. Now, I do have a little bit more to do on this. I need to do the um, the stairs, which are in this um, green color, and then I need to personalize it. Hers says Margaret Harris right here, and says Walnut, Iowa, and so I think I haven't decided fully how I'm going to personalize it yet. I do have my initials up here, H and a J. Um, I thought about putting um, my name and my husband's name right over here and then our last name and then like established and then um our the year we got married 2016. thought about doing that um i live in oklahoma so oklahoma is kind of a long word to go right here um but i haven't fully decided but i'm really happy with how this turned out um it was a lot of fun to stitch although i will say it will not break my heart to not have to stitch another Magnolia Blossom for a while. Um, the first, like, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven were fine, but the last couple were a little bit of a struggle for me. I was just tired of stitching that motif. Um, 
So anyway, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, this is probably a mystery linen. I'm pretty sure it's a picture of this plus. I, if I was guessing, I would maybe say ale. Um, but I didn't have the, the sticker on the piece, so it might not be, but it's kind of just a really pretty uh, milk chocolate kind of brown. Um, I really love it. I really love how the white pops on this and how the um, kind of corally red pops on it as well. Uh, my colors I use, the black is called Creek Bed, the green is called Fathom, the white is Tusk, the um, pink is Rosebud, and this kind of tan one here is called Khaki, and they are all by Color and Cotton. So that is my blessing sampler, and the goal with the blessing samplers is to have them done by um, the end of January. And um, today is the 28th, so probably this evening I will decide how I'm going to personalize it and I will um, get it stitched up so that I have a finish um, to start the new year. Okay, let me show you some FFOs. And then we'll, we'll do some whips. So one of the things that I stitched recently is um, New Love by Blackbird Designs. And I love this piece. It's just, the color palette's really romantic to me with um, pinkies, like a pinky red and then like a light pink here. Um, I didn't wanna stitch the whole thing. So what I did was I stitched this bottom part right here. The same as up here. Um, this, uh, I wanna say, I want to say the this piece I thought I'm trying to read where it was I thought that they'd said that it was um, stitched for Barb or Alma's niece who was getting married maybe I just made that up but I really thought it was I thought it's oh yeah this sampler was stitched to celebrate the engagement of Barb's niece Emily Adams so here's that piece I um, again did a color conversion. Um, I used color and cotton. This is the same um, linen. This is Sandcastle. And I stitched this using trapeze and I think fairy tale from color and cotton. These two blues, they look really similar. This one right here, um, fairy tale, is just slightly darker than trapeze. Um, so I did my uh, first initial and my the initial of my maiden name and then an L and a J for my husband and our birth or our anniversary year um, and I was really happy with how it turned out. I did um, a light blue floral on the back and then I did some chenille trim from Lady Dot and I filled it with crushed walnut shells. I really love how it feels. Um, and it just kind of sits in the sits in the doble for um, for Valentine's. But one thing I like about this was um, <clears throat> I didn't use a lot of the pinks and reds, the traditional Valentine colors, and I'm kind of okay with that because I feel like this um, can really stay out year round, and it's not too girly uh, where my husband will be like, "Why is there pink in here?" Um, not like he really cares, but um, I just kind of did some blues instead so I really was happy with how that one turned out another finish that I had for 2024 is um, Little House Needleworks Frosty Flakes and I started stitching this maybe right before Christmas or that time between Christmas and New Year's and here it is I stitched this on 32 count I believe this is dirty by weeks and I did use color and cotton. I love how the lime green kind of pops on this um, this linen. With the white too, it just looks really um, fun for me, and or fun to me. And one thing I like about this is it's not your typical winter color palette. Um, I feel like I always see a lot of whites and blues and stuff for winter, and I really like, um, I really enjoyed the green. So here it is, again I used the white, um, chenille from Lady Dot and then I did this green um, on the back so really fun really fun for that one okay and my last finish 
is, let me take it out of the package. This is Summer Iris, which is a reward of merit pincushion um, and strawberry by Blackbird Designs. And here it is. So I did, again, color and cotton color conversion on this. Um, I was really happy with how this one turned out. And then on the back, I did this um, kind of pale green gingham. Love it. And this is kind of fun because it can sit out year round. Um, I don't know if you can tell, I did the year down here. Um, and I did it in, I think it was old lace. But one thing I like about this too is that it's here, but it's really subtle looking. It's not um, kind of in your face. And then the cute little birds at the top. I'm not really a purple girl, um, but I really liked stitching these irises. That was a lot of fun. So again, it's, that's another piece too that can stay out um, all year. So there we are. It's kind of fun to see them together. I think the original, the purples are a little bit darker but I was really happy with how mine turned out. So, all right, so those are my FFOs. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> I can put those over there. Um, let me, you've seen my whip for the Smalls Exchange. Um, I have a couple things that I'm, I want to start soon. I need to pull colors. I actually have it all packaged up right now, so I'm not going to get it out, but, um, Sally Spencer by Birds of a Feather. I was actually talking to Jessica this morning and um, I think I might start mine. Hers is just beautiful. If you've seen it, you can look on her Instagram or her floss tube. She showed pictures of it before and seeing hers again really inspired me to um, start mine. So I need to go pull colors because um, I will do, you know, a color and cotton conversion. Um, but it got me motivated. I'm really ready to ready to start that one. Another one I'd like to start, I don't know when, is um, The Winter is Past by Blackbird. I have just a few colors pulled for this one. Um, this linen from Color and Cotton. This is Travertine. And then I've just pulled some greens. Some of these are Color and Cotton. Some are um, Weeks. But what I like to do you know, on color and cotton, you get an eight yard skein um, on each card. So there's quite a bit more. Um, so sometimes what I like to do is I will pull the called for colors. Um, I have Olive and Schneckly. And so sometimes what I'll do is I will pull the called fours and then I will compare these to my colors that I have in my color and cotton stash and try and replace them just so I don't on the off chance that I run out, um, I like using color and cotton because there's quite a bit more. So um, I'm not fully committed to any of these colors yet. I was just kind of tinkering around, but um, but a lot of really pretty blues and um, and greens right now. So um, we'll see. I still have plenty of time. Um, I haven't made solid plans to start it for sure or even even when. But um, that is definitely one that I would really like to get done um, in 2024. Okay. All right. We've talked about Martha Harris. Let's, um, let's go into haul. So it's, I haven't done a video since before Christmas. So since then we had Christmas and my birthday. So I need to show you um, some of the gifts uh, my mom made for me for my birthday because they are over the top. So let me let me start with Christmas first because I'm really excited to show you my birthday one. So one of the things she made me for Christmas was she made me this really cute um, project folder. That's what the inside looks like. And one thing I like about this with it just being um, scissors and pens is that you can really use this um, every day. Um, it's not too themed for, you know, seasonal stitching or anything like that. Um, one really exciting thing is she opened her own online shop. Um, she has rebranded. She used to be on Instagram as J Weston 1959 and now she has changed her name and she is Julie Just Sews. 
and um, she has a big cartel um, online shop. If you follow me on Instagram, if you go to my um, link in my bio, I link directly to um, to her shop in there. So please go um, follow her if you haven't, if you don't already follow her, and um, she will post and announce when she has shop updates. So her stuff goes really, really quickly. So if it's something that you're interested in, make sure you set an alarm or a reminder on your phone so you don't miss out. And she makes really nice stuff. It's really um, high quality. Um, one thing that she does that, um, that I don't see a whole lot of people do is that she binds all this by hand. So um, her seams are pretty darn near perfect. Um, and again, you can see the inside of her cases. Um, she has a zipper right here, and then there's pockets on both sides, um, little spots for scissors and things like that. You can put your pens up here. And then um, she did a little loop because I like to use, um, I like to use floss um, on my rings, and I usually just clip my ring up here. And then um, whenever I close my case, I just kind of fold my floss up and then close it. So um, anyway, really nice stuff. So if you're interested, um, okay, so I got this for um, Christmas. Another thing she made me, I love Bonnie and Camille. So she made me this really pretty project bag and also made me a matching little notion bag. And y'all, this one is like over the top and it's beautiful. She made me this project bag and the back is so pretty. So um, I I love this one. And I honestly, let me turn that down a little bit. Or maybe we can just turn that off. We don't need that on. Um, anyway, I love my quilt block project bags. Um, for a long time, I was a vinyl project bag girl. And I still am. I still love a good vinyl front. But um, I just, I think, I, I think now, um, I just, I like the all fabric bags. Um, but the good news is everybody has their own personal style and preference. Um, and there's plenty out there for everybody. So there's that. Um, another thing she made me was this really cute little pin cushion. It has a little mama mouse and a little baby mouse down here. And there's the back. Um, and then let me show you what she made me for my birthday because it is over the top awesome. Uh, let me reach down here and grab it. Okay, so another thing that she made for me for Christmas is this um, little chicken. And it has, um, you know, it's little wings and she put a pair of scissors in there. So that is super cute. And then this quilted heart. You can really put it anywhere. You can put it over a door. You can just kind of hang it. Mine's just kind of sitting out right now just for some decor in my craft room. Okay, are you ready to see the cutest thing? I don't wanna say she's ever made, but it's it might be the cutest thing she's ever made. So this is a vintage train case. And let me prop that up just a little bit. Um, this vintage train case, she painted it um, a very light pink which in here on the video, it's almost kind of coming out a little corally, but um, it is a light, light pink. And there's a little tag that has my name on it. And you open it up. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Okay. Um, so she did another little pin cushion. And this tray comes out. It smelled a little bit like um, like spray paint, so I put in a couple dryer sheets just to try and absorb some of that smell, but it smells fine now. Anyway, this is so fun. I love it so much. Um, I thought it was so unique and clever. I've never seen anybody have something like this, so I think that's one reason why I love it so much too. And there's these cute little strawberries and um, the inside. I don't know if you can see here, but um, around the inside there's little red and blue flowers and some red and white gingham. And honestly, I've just kind of had it open 
on display in my craft room with this little heart sitting right here. So um, really, really clever. So I don't know if you ever come across um, these vintage train cases or not, but um, it was just so clever. Like I said, I've never seen anybody do anything like this before. Um, so I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it because it was really um, a special thing. So thank you, mom. Okay, let me put this back down here. Oh, I didn't mention this either. If you look at the case, you can see where she has cut out um, different kind of little scenes. She kind of fussy cut some stuff and it's decoupaged on the case itself. And then on the top, it has these um, Tasha Noel, these little girls riding bikes. So really fun. Okay, so that some haul was my card she gave me for my birthday. Um, okay, some haul. Let me show you a little bit more haul. Um, it's been a while, like I said, since I filmed a video, so I feel like I have a lot of things to show and share. Um, this is the monthly color and cotton January um, fabric. It is called Sugar Cookie. It is a really pretty kind of a vanilla-y cream. Um, I get the 32 count fat quarter. This is the January uh, Brights Thread Club. I'm probably not gonna take them all out. No, no I won't take them all out. Um, really pretty for Brights. This is the Primitive Primitive Neutral Thread Club for January, and it has a lot of um, really pretty browns. I love that green. The All Color, this is the first five skeins. And the other five skeins. And then I needed a little extra. So one thing I do, um, and you can do it too actually. If you ever place an order online with Color and Cotton and it's between like your club shipments, you can elect for them to hold the thread and um, where the coupon code is, you can write club ship, all one word, all capital letters, and they'll just hold the order and ship it with your club so you're not having to pay additional shipping. So I actually needed a couple, um, I got a couple extra skeins of Clara I think this was in the November um, set when they did kind of like the Nutcracker theme. And then um, I did another of this yellow called Goldilocks. It just looks like a really pretty, um, almost like a little baby chick yellow. I thought I might need an extra come spring for spring stitching. So I had them hold that and ship that together with my Color and Cotton monthly order. Um, okay. I got Sweet Wings Studio, A Little Bit of Winter. I really love this one. I think it's just that little tiny snowman that I love so much. That is just precious. Um, and then I got a whole bunch of blackbirds. Um, let me show you my other non-blackbirds first. Okay. Um, I got the Valentine Day Quaker from Primrose Cottage. And I actually have a tiny start on this. And this is a really pale pink. It's not, um, it's not the called for. I think the called for was blush. It's not blush. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But you can see it's just a really pretty pale pink. And then the pink I'm using is a vintage color and cotton called Primrose. And it's got some really pretty variegation to it. Um, I did get the 2024 Collector's Heart, and if you look at this, it also comes with the fabric and this little butterfly charm, so you can finish it just like the picture. Um, I'll probably change my colors, because that's just, just what I do. 
And then from the D stash site, I got this Lizzie Kate. Um, let me actually open it up. I it says accept what is, let go of what was, have faith in what will be. And that's the big piece, but I actually got it because I really liked this little sampler over here. Um, it was whimsical and very feminine looking, and so I'm really looking forward to stitching that one. Okay, and the rest of my haul is Blackbird. Um, and it's nothing like super, super new, but it's just kind of um, gaps I had in my stash. So I went through and just kind of bought a whole bunch of things. I got a gift card to 123 Stitch for my birthday. So I decided to hurry up and use it. So I got um, Trick or Treat, Tricks or Treat. I got the Rarest Flower. And I actually almost thought about doing that for my Blackbird Small since it the theme was, you know, it has to have a bird on it somewhere. But um, I ended up going with the Wild and Sweet. I liked that bird just a little bit better, but I still really like that bird. Um, I got It's Spring Fever. And if you've ever watched Chrissy, for, or Christy, Chrissy, Christy, from Crosshatch Quilts, she has stitched a couple of these, and um, they're in her bedroom, and they are just lovely. She picked really pretty gold frames. This is All the Hills Echoed. Very similar um, color palette. Um, from the Tender Hearts series, I got Pledge of Affection and Sweetheart Pocket. Nicole Spore actually stitched this, um, and hers is really pretty. She did hers with reds and pinks. So it's very um, Valentine-y. Um, and then from the D stash site, I also bought Crowns and Shields, which was one I did not have. Um, and I don't think I'm going to stitch it, you know, as it is here, but what I think would be really pretty to do, um, <clears throat> is stitch some of these individually and they could be just small little dough fillers or dough bowl fillers. They're not going to be very big. They're going to be like maybe three by three, if that, like they're, they're pretty small, um, but I just thought they were really fun and um, they'd be cute to stitch individually too if you didn't want to stitch the um, like the whole roll or something. Um, and then the last one, again, is not anything super new, but I bought it off the D Stash site. It is United We Stand. I did not have this one yet, um, but I really want to stitch this one this year. I love stitching Patriotic and I really love the muted colors of this. It's not overly overly bright it just kind of looks really vintage and I think it'd be really pretty on linen that you like tea coffee dye so it really has a really cool vintage vibe to it so um okay what else I made a bunch of notes here so let me make sure I checked off all my things I was going to talk about smalls exchange blessing sampler haul whips FFOs new starts I think that might be it y'all um Okay, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We're currently at about 33 minutes, so that sounds like a good stopping point for today. Um, I am really going to try hard in 2024 to film more regularly. Um, I don't like to film unless I have a lot of stuff to show and share um, because I know your time is valuable. And um, and if you've ever filmed a floss tube, you know the time that it takes to you know get stuff out and put it together and edit it and you know, take everything out of your house, not out of your house, but out of your displays and kind of bring it in one room and then, you know, put it all back. And, um, I'm not real good at putting it all back. So, um, anyway, I'll quit rambling. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.